Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is EVGA's Z68 SLI motherboard. Unlike the P67 SLI, the Z68 SLI motherboard from EVGA adds Z68 chipset functionality such as Intel Smart Response technology which allows you to combine a traditional hard drive with a small capacity SSD to improve storage transfer rate performance. Now as for features, the EVGA Z68 SLI, as the name implies, is capable of SLI technology and also supports Core i7 and Core i5 processors and which are for socket 1155 and it also has USB 3 and SATA 3 6G support and this package comes with a free EVGA Frostbite thermal grease inside. Now let's flip the box to the back so you can see more of the features, just a quick overview of what the Z68 SLI layout looks like. It is actually extremely similar, uh, very identical to the P67 SLI with the exception of course with the uh, uh, features inside the motherboard itself once you install installed and have everything running. Now uh, you can see the uh, key features in there. It has a the memory support goes up to 2133 megahertz and 16 gigabytes. It has three PCI 2.0, PCI Express 2.0 graphic expansion slots. It has 10 USB 2.0 ports. It has two USB 3.0 ports in the rear. And it's got plenty of other connecti connectivities. Well, actually, you might as well just open a box so you can see what it looks like. And to open it, you can hear it to the side and just take out the EVGA seal. Just grab a sharp icon, maybe like a like a knife or this scissor right here. Just graze it over the edge. And there we go. And should be a smaller package inside. The box is considerably smaller compared to the uh, For the Win version of the Z68 and the P67 EVG motherboard. And flip this smaller black box open. And you can find first is the documentation. See the uh, installation guide in there, and the driver CD inside with a, a new looking um, EVJ keys badge. So you know, like it is made of metal and some carbon fiber material in there. And the free EVJ Frostbite uh, thermal interface material. And you see the user's guide. It's all. It's an all English user's guide for it applies to both Z68 and P67 motherboard and this is the fold out uh, visual guide it's very easy uh, you can just actually just uh, keep this handy beside your system in case you need to uh, have a quick say quick layout of where, uh, which items go where especially the front panel header Put the documentation aside and look at the Z68 motherboard itself. There's another compartment here underneath. And let's see what accessories you can find here. You have uh, here's the uh, external SATA and a four-pin Molex to but uh, three SATA power connectors. This is a, another SATA uh, data connector and a four pin Molex verdict to a, a two SATA ports for power. And here is the IO Shield backplate. It is, uh, let's actually open this up so I can show you what it looks like. A scissor here. Actually, I don't need the scissors since they're actually these notches already. Just make it convenient, just easily carry it out. 
I like a clean opening. There we go. And here, see the other side is padded and it's silver. And each of the, it looks very, very cool. It's black and it's, uh, it's quite glossy there. Within each of the uh, functions are labeled. Going to reset CMOS there. And which of the ports have a USB 3.0? And let's uh, empty covering. And this is the two way SLI bridge since the EVGA Z68 SLI motherboard is capable of two way SLI. And this is a USB 2.0 and a Firewire uh, rear panel adapter. Now let's actually put everything aside and take a look at the motherboard itself right here. I'm just take it out. And here we have the EVGA Z68 SLI motherboard out of the box. And actually a bunch of labels here covering the, the DIMM slots. Uh, these are standard if you have a EVGA motherboard just basically reminds you of how uh, the dual channel slots work and uh, just a reminder for voltage uh, that you apply 165 1.65 volt or less and the CPU also has a, a quick reminder and installation guide is a pretty neat feature if you have, in case you haven't uh, installed a processor before or built your own system say easy step-by-step -step guide there and another cover here for the uh, heatsink in the middle now let's actually zoom in to each of the features to take a closer look okay let's look at all the features starting with the CPU area here you can see a very really tall heatsink uh, cooling the VRM area and it's an eight-phase VRM and as you can see it is all uh, solid Japanese capacitors and the Socket 1155 is actually a uh, this is a um, this is a Foxconn socket there. It's a label and uh, the power connector for the eight pin uh, EPS 12 volt is located right here, upper left hand upper uh, left hand corner. See, it's uh, directly right above the heat sink there, VRM, and a four pin uh, fan connector. Now, this is actually the CPU fan connector is actually here on uh, right where uh, it typically is and if you look closely there is a there are two mounting holes one is for the LGA 775 and one is for the LGA 1155 EVGA calls this the double play uh, heatsink mounting solution since uh, most enthusiasts uh, who, are, who have water cooling solutions have very expensive copper blocks for the CPU you can they can reuse their LG775 copper blocks instead of buying a new one. That's a neat feature to have. Saves the uh, enthusiast a couple of uh, a few more bucks. And actually, let's just stay in this view because let me just show. There's actually uh, a standard ATX size compared to the EVGA P uh, P67 and Z68 for the win, which is slightly wider. There's actually, uh, let me just take out my more to verify, but just from eyeballing it, it looks like a 9x6x12 motherboard, which is fairly standard for an ATX size. Yep, it is 9x6. And let's see the height is 12. Yeah. And see that there is actually, uh, similar to the P67 for the wind, there is space here. This is a gap uh, for larger heat sinks between the uh, first DIMM slot and the CPU area. This is that. And there also, there's also a gap here. Uh, in between the two dim slots for better airflow between them and here uh, take a closer look there is uh, there are these voltage uh, pads here you can see it's labeled V core VCP VCCIO where you can take your digital multimeter and measure your readings voltage readings and uh, here is uh, one more four pin uh, PLM fan and a 24 pin power connector. Now unlike the P67 and Z68 for the win, it's not 90 degree angled, it's just a traditional 24 pin uh, uh, straight angled power connector. And here is the uh, low profile EVGA chipset cooling the, uh, the PCH chipset from uh, Intel. And here is another 4 pin fan header and 
the SATA ports. Now, interesting thing about this, I was checking out the spec sheet uh, before I started unboxing, and it lists that the uh, SATA 3, or the SATA 3 6G connector, this is all uh, stemming from P Intel PCH, so there's standard is for uh, SATA 2 3.0 and uh, 2 SATA 3 6G. So, uh, in here it's labeled SATA 4 and SATA 2 3 because uh, one of the SATA slots from the PCH is being used as an external uh, SATA. So in here it's labeled only SATA 4, so that's pro that probably means that you can only use either one of these two at a time. You can't use both. Uh, well, I'll verify once I have the, the system running and in the BIOS, but uh, as far as I know right now, because of the specification sheet and uh, from what the labels here uh, tell me, and that is can only use the, one of the these two SATA uh, 3.0 rather SATA 2 3 uh, 3G slots one at a time. And here at the bottom we have a jumper for BIOS select switch. Just uh, angle that properly. Here you go. Here's the and uh, another four pin fan header at the bottom. And here is uh, the front panel connectors. They're color coded. Easy unit, they're also labeled, so you don't even need the pull out guide, visual guide, you know, much easier. You have the HD LED, you have the RST, power on, power LED, RST, of course, reset, not doesn't uh, stand for Intel Smart Response Technology until Rapid Source Technology at this point. And uh, but this motherboard does have that feature. And there's USB 2.0 headers, and each of them have covers either. Also, the Intel. Uh, uh, there's actually a uh, uh, firewire port here, the bottom as well. Let's uh, put those back. And this uh, interesting, you can see the BIOS in there. One is built in, and one you can actually replace the module with. And this is the uh, debug LED, which comes in very handy uh, when you're troubleshooting. Also, doubles as uh, if if it has the same functionality as the P67 and Z68 for the motherboard, it will tell you the CPU temperature as well. And um, let's move down here. And uh, see some chips here. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what this one is, uh, but the, this appears to be a Texas Instrument chip. And there's a four pin fat hair there. And this is a PLX chip. I'm assuming that is for the uh, PCIe slots. There is a pair of PCIe X16 here. Uh, the top one. That was PCIe X16, but if you run SLI, both of them run uh, PCIe X16, uh, PCIe uh, X16 at 8x. But uh, since there is no NF200 chip, there is you can't run triple SLI unlike the for the win version. So you uh, and but there is also a PCIe X16 at the bottom. So I'm sure that's uh, the PLX is powering that one to add a PhysX. Uh, so you can add a physics card with a pair of SLI uh, video cards. And here, where at the bottom, there's actually uh, one, two, three PCIe X1 slots, a pair of PCIe X16 slots for graphics, and uh, one PCIe X16 at the bottom for SLI. You can see there's spacing, there's gap. Uh, there's just, uh, you can actually just take a, uh, a do two a pair of them, uh, uh, pair of uh, SLI cards in SLI, and there's no extra uh, uh, PCI slot gap between them. So that's an interesting choice that uh, AVGA uh, at EVGA went with. I would have uh, actually, I I would have preferred if they just had a gap there and uh, just uh, remove the uh, PCI X16 for uh, for PhysX completely. But that's just my personal pre personal preference. But uh, let's take a look at it here because there is a the uh, there is a heat sink here with a, with the LED lights. I know there's a I know that will light up because there is a two pin fan uh, two pin power connector right there. There's also a four pin fan header beside it as well. See the there is a PCIe X1 slot here, and it is the heat sink. Oh, there's heat sink there. It doesn't block it at all, unlike the uh, P67 and Z68 for the win motherboard EVGA. So that's a that's a neat uh, layout. That's they've that's a much better layout than that uh, for the win version because you can actually use the topmost PCIe X1 slot. And 
See, so, uh, here you can find you have the SP diff header and the front panel audio header. Now, uh, typically it's here at the bottom, but at the lower left hand corner, but in here you actually can find the uh, reset, onboard reset, onboard power, and uh, CMOS reset, uh, reset right down there at the right directly underneath the last PCIe X1 slot. And there's a built in speaker as well, if I didn't mention that yet. And here in the back, we already covered the audio headers. And see a couple of Marvel chips there. And the uh, Realtek audio. So let's see what those actually want here in the back with the uh, you have these audio connectors and a pair of Marvell network uh, RJ45 connectors, you know, gigabit line connectors, and you have uh, now see count how many USB 2.0 ports you have. You have two, four, and six USB 2.0 ports, and you have a FireWire port and an eSATA port powered by the Intel PCH and you also have a pair of USB 3.0 ports that are uh, let's see what chip they use it is an uh, it is an NEC chip and and of course the similar to one in front and the bottom there's also a uh, CMOS reset that you can access even when your case is installed and uh, if even if your motherboard is installed inside a case so let us actually plug this motherboard in now into our uh, test system put in my i7-2600K processor and might be a pair of GTX 580s and see how well it performs